say straight away that easy though it is to criticize these courts, we have to recognize that they've done a great deal of good. I'll, I'll explain in more detail the good they've done later if you're not aware of it. But so bear in mind these criticisms or comments are going to come against um, a, an overbalancing effect of good. Never mind. Now the first thing that happened was that Milosevic, president here, said to be involved in what's going on in here and here, uh, s sat around a table for nine years with uh, the president of Montenegro, who was associated with this country now, the rest had all gone, and uh, the president of the combination of those two countries, and they decided on what to do with their military. Basically, they decided how to support the war that was going on in Croatia and Bosnia. And the documents were stenographically recorded. You had precisely, word for word, what they all said. And we got hold of the documents. And we were going to use them in court. We did use them in court. But at that moment, Mrs. Del Ponte, you saw a picture of her in the first screen, who was my boss, something called The Prosecutor. She came to a deal with Serbia, whereby the best bits, from our point of view, the worst bits from Milosevic's point of view, were blacked out and would never be shown to the public. Now she no doubt, I don't know why she did it, I told her she shouldn't do it. Um, she was my boss, I had to obey. We had a terrible relationship as a result of this and other events, doesn't matter. I, I, I couldn't overrule her. This was within her powers to do. It is actually very well known and increasingly the subject of available evidence that the West agreed that these areas could be taken. Uh, maybe it was simply because they could no longer be held. Maybe it was part of some other grand political plan that the West agreed they could be taken. Whether the West foresaw that some or all of them would be killed, an entirely different matter. Maybe they thought they wouldn't be. But we knew uh, that there were intercepts of telephone conversations passing between Milosevic in Serbia and Mladic, the man who was in charge of all the killings or decided to do all the killings in uh, Srebrenica. We knew that these intercepts existed and it won't surprise you to know that as the prosecutor of the case, I wanted to get them. And can you think of any more interesting evidence? This is all in them just before the center of the middle of July 1995. And imagine, remember, Milosevic is being charged Milosevic from over here is being charged for running, organizing, supervising, helping, aiding, abetting, inciting the nasty things, terribly nasty things. 8,000 people to kill is a very, very, very bad thing. Here. Now, if he on the phone had said, look here, Mladic, it's okay, you can take Srebrenica, but for goodness sake, remember the Hague Conventions, the Geneva Conventions, all the protocols. The world is watching you. Put them on a bus, give them a bottle of water, make sure you have plenty of lavatory stops and take them off to a place where, the, where you want them to go. That would make him not guilty. If on the other hand he said, it's all right, we've been told you can take Srebrenica and there is going to be no air attack on you, you can do what you like implying that he could kill them all, that might well be that he was guilty. So, as I say, unsurprisingly, we tried to get hold of these intercepts. We were very close to getting them. A couple of days away from a court hearing when a court would have ordered a country that had them to hand them over. But into the office of Mrs. Del Ponte, walked the representative of another country. 
and said, you will withdraw the application for those incepts. And so she did. I again, what could I do? Resign? Get cross? How bad is that? At the time, I was able to persuade myself in the sort of pell-mell of running this very difficult, very big and very complicated case that this was a decision that was within her power to make and we didn't know for sure what the intercepts would say. So maybe it wasn't improper. I think I was wrong in that. I think I should have kicked up a fuss, although I know that if I resigned, she would have been only too pleased because I was troublesome and all that she would have got would have been a compliant lawyer to come in and do her bidding. But just how bad is it? How bad is it that an external force can interfere in the uh, running of an investigation? Can I just ask what right this person had to make this demand? Uh, if they were uh, an external country. I'm afraid the real world is that if you're a very big country and you pay a lot of money for the running of a court, um, uh, maybe a very, very big country, you can get away with almost anything you like. What to do with the origin of the intercepts? Sorry? What to do with the origin? We don't know because we, we uh, the court had systems for making the intercepts available with all security preserved and natural security interests preserved. No. Uh, and the only inference I was able to draw then, an inference strengthened now, is that the interference with our investigation was to stop the world knowing how much the West knew. And films have come out since quite a lot showing sort of inching up the strength of this conclusion, showing quite how complicit America, France and uh, Britain were in fixing the taking of Srebrenica, abandoning the Dutch who were supposed to be guarding it, and thus ensuring, or at least allowing, that these 8,000 people would be killed. 8,000 people, by the way, whose remaining bereaved family members still don't know, really, what happened. And will not know until they die, because if the international community is clever enough, it will keep these things from them until long after they're dead. Remember, in the great world in which we live, victims count for nothing when any other big interest is involved. State interest will always trump the interest of the victims in knowing what happened. Awful, but true.